Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. Going to cover the top stories today going on around the world. Uh, looking at Poland, confirming NATO troops that are in Ukraine. President Putin, uh, third day of the election now, counting the ballots, that is. He is obviously going to win by a landslide. Over 90% of the vote has gone to him. 80% has already been counted. And of course, today happens to be the 21st anniversary of uh, this young lady right here that uh, was killed in uh, Rachel Corey, that is, that was killed defending Palestinians in the, Pal in, in, uh, in the West Bank there. Uh, those of you that will remember her, this is the young lady right here that was there fighting for the rights of Palestinians there. She was an American, 23 years old. Process and water uh, supply every few days and uh day, and uh the bulldozer that came around crushed her and killed her of course they were always bulldozing the homes this was one of the things that she was an advocate about there that's her right there going up uh trying to get them to stop the israelis would not stop and just run her over with the bulldozer and killed her uh she is considered by the palestinians a true martyr and a hero very sad that she lost her life in this way here and that the Israelis just don't seem to care uh, about human life whatsoever. Poland confirming NATO troops are in Ukraine. Uh, Russia has never had any intention of invading Europe. It has always been the other way around. The entire war was staged from the outset and was intended to force Russia to defend its own people in Donbass. The West needs this war because the financial systems can no longer be sustained. Governments default when they can no longer sell new debt to pay off the old. We are dangerously approaching that, and the war will be the excuse for default, like in World War II. This is something that's coming out of Russia that they're saying there. Danish Prime Minister Met Frederikson, Frederikson, excuse me, said she decided Denmark would send its artillery units to Ukraine. Meanwhile, NATO is moving nuclear missiles to the border with Russia. There are absolutely not one leader interested in seeking peace, the article states. The population has already been decided to be uh, thinned out like a herd of sheep. Look at any war. More civilians always die than soldiers. That's what the article here is saying there on the burningplatform.com. And going on into other news as well, uh, on uh, the Russian site, RAA.RU, for Europe, war against Russia becomes inevitable. Yes, believe it or not, that's what that article is there is saying there. Emmanuel Macron continues to uncontrollably gush with statements and initiatives after announcing plans to offer Russia a ceasefire during the Summer Olympics in Paris and readiness to talk to Putin if he calls the French president returned uh, to the topic of Western military participation in the fighting in Ukraine. A fresh interview with La Parencia, Macron allowed operations to confront Russian troops. Wow, that's, that's a brand new step there uh, for France, confronting Russian troops. That is military action straight up without any question whatsoever. Putin set for a landslide win. Russia's elections commissions has stated there. 80% of the votes have been counted thus far. And so far, Putin has re received an estimated 87.15% 80, of the vote in that race already. So it is obviously he will win by a landslide in the country. And of course, you know, the interesting thing about this is, is that the West has been hoping that due to the sanctions and things like that, that the Russian people would want to oust him and get a new leader in there so that they could bring about a quote unquote peace in the region. Well, that's just not happening, obviously enough, especially in light of the fact that Putin actually got that many votes. You know, the sad thing is, is uh, well, I shouldn't say the sad thing is, the, the truth of the matter is, is we were always told that, that Putin would never actually run in 2024 or that he would be replaced by a hardliner. It doesn't seem like that's going to be the case. A lot of things do change over time, and it seems that uh, Russia is keeping Putin. I guess he's doing a good enough job for the New World Order after all. UK spies handed, handed a list of nine British towns Putin would bomb first if Russia starts World War III. I find that interesting. If Russia starts World War III. Not that NATO is not sending troops into Ukraine to cause World War III to take place, but if Russia starts World War III, 
What are the cities that they're going to bomb first? Hmm. Well, the list is on there and says, while it is likely that towns with historic connections to the armed forces such as Aldershot and Colchester and uh, Portsmouth, excuse me, Portsmouth are already on the list. Other options range from Chatham, Kent, Tideworth, and Salisbury in Wiltshire. Uh, the up-to-date list for the complete ever held by the British Intelligence Service was patched to a British intelligence officer in Eastern Europe by a Russian agent. So there you have it. They have uh, new cities that they've added to their list now of what they would bomb first in the wake of a war with Europe. I would imagine that Russian agent did that intentionally. I imagine Putin wanting them to know exactly what his plans are. China, according to uh, Sputnik, elevates ties with Angola as BRICS promises to pave a way for a multipolar world. The BRICS block overtook the G7 in its share of the world's gross domestic product in 2020 and looks set to continue to grow. China and Angola announced they will upgrading diplomatic relations to a comprehensive strategic cooperative partnership on Friday as 2024 looks to be a landmark year for the development economic development in a global south. So that's why there's been so much push over who's going to control Africa. Russia's there, China's there, the United States is there, Europe is there, Great Britain is there. So much fighting, but the South African people have been siding with Russia and China more and more. They see the failing dollar in their countries there and the BRICS as being the more stable side of what is actually going on there in that part of the world. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you that are joining our LifeWave Zoom tonight at 8 p.m. Eastern, don't forget the website you go to for that meeting is www.x39hub.com. Uh, I'm Stephen Benoon with Israeli News Live.